Hi everyone, thank you for tuning into this presentation. The title of this talk is Exploring Differential Base Distinguishers and Forgeries for ESCON. This is a joint work by David Gerard, Tom Perian, and myself, Chuen Chuen Tan. This is the outline of this talk. We will start off with some preliminaries, followed by the introduction of constraint programming and the parameters that we have used so that we can find good differential characteristics for the ESCON permutation. Then, these differential characteristics are used to obtain distinguishers, forgeries, and collision results for ESCON. We will start off with a brief description of ESCON. ESCON is a family of authenticated encryption scheme. In the current NIST lightweight cipher competition, two instances of the family, ESCON128 and ESCON128A, are among the finalists. The encryption process, as well as the various parameters of ESCON, are shown here. As our work focuses more on finding the differential characteristics for the ESCON permutation, we will now take a closer look at the wrong function of the ESCON permutation itself. The state size of ESCON is 320 bits. It can be visualized as a 5 by 64 bit array. There are three subfunctions in the permutation. PC refers to the addition of constants, which we will largely ignore here since the difference is not affected by this subfunction. PS is the substitution layer, which consists of 64 parallel 5 bit S boxes acting on each column of the state. The S box is shown over here. PL is the linear layer given by the equations over here. Each WI corresponds to the ith row of the state, which has 64 bits. In a previous work, Dobrening et al. introduced a tool in their paper titled Heuristic Tool for Linear Cryptanalysis with Applications to Caesar Candidates. The idea is to first choose a linear characteristic with some variables already fixed. Then, from the remaining unfixed variables, they would guess one of them and add them into the linear characteristic. Now, we will propagate what are the additional constraints that were caused by this move. Suppose that there is a contradiction between the new constraints and the one that we already had so far. We simply backtrack and choose another variable. If there is no contradiction caused by this move, we continue guessing. Now, we can actually draw parallels between this dedicated heuristic and what constraint programming is doing. This is also why we think that using CP can help in the case for ESCON as well. So here is a short introduction to CP. CP is a form of automated method that is used to solve a wide range of combinatorial problems. In the case of cryptography, it has been used mostly to find differential characteristics on word-oriented block ciphers. In addition to that, there are a range of solvers along with their own search techniques and strategies available that can be used to get the best one for each use case. We will now move on to the search for the differential characteristics of ESCON. In this work, we are using the Minizing language and Chelf solver for our CP program. And the objective function is to minimize the minus log 2 probabilities to represent the individual S boxes in the substitution layer, we employ a table constraint for each of them. The table in this case, DDT, contains all the possible transitions from every input difference. The first parameter in this case will have to choose from one of the possible transitions in DDT. The input difference and output difference, BS and AS, are written as 5 bit arrays instead of the integer values. To represent the linear layer, which made up of rotations and XORs, we simply write functions for them. Rotations are just a renaming process. And for XORs, we use a sum with modulo 2 to simulate. Now, the state interacts in the following manner. We start off with BS0, the initial input difference. Then we apply the PS layer to the AS0. Then a PL layer will bring it to BS1 and so on and so forth 
until we reach the n round input difference. Note that in CP, we do not necessarily have to propagate from round 0 first. We can easily start in the middle and propagate in both ways for example. This is usually controlled by a search strategy. In our case, these are the parameters that we use in our search strategy. In search for the best differential characteristics for 4 rounds for example, we fix the S boxes at round 2 first, followed by that of in round 1, 0, and then 3. This means that we force the search to start looking at variables at round 2 first, before deciding the variables to fix at the other rounds. For the variable choice, we set it to be random order. This means that within the S boxes in the same round, we don't follow a specific sequence of say fixing the first S box first, followed by a second one and then a third, but instead it will just be in a random order. For the constraint choice, we set it to be in domain min. In this case, we are telling the program to search for the smallest value in the domain first. Since 1 represents an active S box and a 0 represents an inactive S box, the solver will try to set it to be inactive first. To further restrict the space of the search, we have a two step procedure. The first step is to just use a single linear layer of the SCON permutation in CP and find out all the possible active positions of S boxes in a single round. We then restrict the number of active S boxes in the output to be exactly k. Next, we will hard code this characteristic found in round 1 and 2. Note that since we will have a lot of characteristics, we will have to run them all. These are the results that we have obtained. Using CP, we are able to match the probabilities compared to the best differential characteristics found using a dedicated heuristic, as we can see for round 4 and 5 and k equals to 3. Now, with an automated method available, we proceed to generate distinguishers for the SCON permutation. First of all, we would like to propose a categorization for distinguishers. They will be the keyed permutation and unkeyed permutation. For keyed permutation, we can assume that the key is added in every round. Without the key, we will not be able to know the information as we propagate through the rounds. This is similar to an analysis of a block cipher. For the unkeyed scenario, there is no key involved. This means that we can actually start in the middle and propagate outwards. We can view them as a black box and a non-black box respectively. This is important as in the case of an unkeyed permutation, we will be able to utilize the degree of freedom to fix some constraints and reducing the overall complexities of the distinguishers. However, we, could, we cannot do it for the key permutation. Here, we will explain what we meant by utilizing the degree of freedom in more detail, as the probabilities or the uncertainties for differential characteristics come from the S boxes. This means that there are certain restrictions or constraints on the input and output values for the S-box. If we can start, say, at the output of a certain S-box or some middle points, we are able to fix some of the bits that satisfy these constraints in advance. This can ensure that the required difference will always propagate through. This will then re reduce the overall cost of the distinguisher. Here is a background of the limited birthday problem. In the limited birthday problem, we ask the following question. What is the probability of a difference in D in that can be met to a difference in D out? In this case, D in and D out are both subsets in the possible input and output difference space. For an ideal permutation, the cost is given here. To find a distinguisher, we would have to achieve a cost that is lower than this. Now, we will try to build a limited birthday distinguisher for the SCON permutation. First, we choose a differential characteristic. We pick one differential characteristic that has the most number of active S boxes lie in the same round. This is so that we can maximize our degree of freedom to fix most of these active S boxes. 
so that we can actually reduce the cost of these distinguishers. Then we extend the characteristic forward and backward with probability 1 by allowing it to be truncated to form d in and d out, which corresponds to input and output differences. Note that d in and d out are only used for the computation of the complexities, so only their size matters. Therefore, if d in or d out are too large or too complex to compute, we can opt to compute a lower bound for the size of their respective complements, forming an upper bound for the size of d in or d out. These are the results of our limited birthday distinguishers on ESCON permutation. Next, we move on to the boomerang distinguishers. Once again, when we are dealing with an unkeyed permutation, we can start from the middle. In the case of four rounds, we start at SP4, given over here in the diagram. In the case of five rounds, we chose to start at SP5, as there are more constraints in the R4. Here is a summary of all the key permutation results for ESCON. In the next slide, we will have the summary for all the unkeyed permutations. Now, we will talk about the forgery. For a forgery in an iteration phase of ESCON AE, we focus on just a single block of a reduced round PB. The idea is to generate good differential characteristics that have input and output difference only in the red part. For ESCON 1 to 8, it corresponds to the first 64 bits or the first row. For ESCON 128A, it corresponds to the first 128 bits or the first two rows. For the finalization phase, we want to have a differential characteristic that has an input difference only in the red part, and for the output difference only in the first three rows, as the last two rows are used to produce the tag T. To achieve all this, we added additional constraints to our CP model and try out multiple other search strategies as well. In particular, for the finalization phase, we also combine the probabilities from various differential truths, as for the very last round, we only cared about the difference at the last two rows. The results here show the best differential characteristics that we have found with the required restrictions. The ones highlighted in orange are the best results that we eventually use to construct the forgery as well as the collisions. This slide shows the forgery results that we have obtained. Next, we will move on to the collisions. For collisions, if we reduce the number of rounds to 2, we manage to find one with a complexity of 2 to the power of minus 103. This is in comparison with the previous best result of 2 to the power of minus 125. The idea is this. For the two round characteristic that we are using, we have 54 constraints in the first round and 102 constraints in the second round. So this is the total probability of the characteristic that we are using. As we can only control the messages in the red part, the first 54 constraints have to be addressed using M0 and M1 only. For the next 102 constraints, this can be addressed by either M0, M1, or M2 over here. The procedure is as follows. First, using M0 and M1, which in total have 128 bits of freedom, we can easily construct 2 to the power of 92 possible pairs of messages. Out of these 2 to the power of 92 pairs of messages, 
to on average to the power of 38 of them will actually pass the 54 constraints in the first round next for the remaining to the power of 38 pairs of messages for each of them we can apply to the power of 64 pairs of messages with this particular delta in so in total we have to the power of 38 times to the power of 64 which will give you to the power of 102 pairs of messages over here now this to the power of 102 pairs of messages on average will there will be one pair of message that will actually satisfy the second round of constraints therefore on average we will obtain a pair of message that has the desired delta out over here therefore if we add delta out to this pair of messages we will eliminate the difference and therefore we will construct a collision now we will move on to the summary in this work we use an automated method cp to actually model the ascon permutation and it actually performs as well as the dedicated heuristics methods it can also also be easily tweaked to find characteristics for various scenarios the advantage of cp is that the formulation is intuitive and therefore it's actually less prone to errors this is in comparison to mlp where we are only restricted to using only integers and inequalities we have also found new distinguishers for the ascon permutation and finally improve some of the forgery and co collision results this sums up my presentation and i would like to thank you for your attention if you are interested in our work you may wish to take a look at our at the full paper that is published in TOS 2022. These are the references for this presentation.